So y'all are going to laugh at me when I say this, but it kind of feels like spring. So despite the fact that it was just snowing in my last video, it is 35-ish degrees today. But look at that sky, and the snow is melting, we just have a little bit left on the ground. And I wanted to take you around the garden right quick, just to kind of give you an overview of what's going on. Because there's a lot of perennials that I planted in the fall, and some of those are showing their little head, which is a good sign, which means they're surviving really well despite winter. Uh, and so this area particularly, uh, where I was going to put in this little path, I've kind of changed my mind. I'm still going to have a little path, but it's just going to kind of go back uh, because I don't have enough space at the back right here to connect it to the path near the moon gate. So uh, the coral bells that I planted here, a lot of them you can't see very well. So um, I'm not sure if that's a good sign or a bad sign. They were really, really tiny, so they were plugs. And I think they will come back all right. Coral bells are pretty, pretty um, hardy, um, but we'll see what they do. Some people don't have great success with coral bells, and I will tell you, uh, it's probably the variety that you're planting. Proven Winners has a really great line, really good stock uh, that their coral bells come from. And so that's mostly the coral bells that I've planted in my garden. And if you get some that are not proven winners, you may have issues with them not surviving over the years. Um, but let me know if you've had any luck with any other varieties. I actually am really interested in doing a really large coral bell project. Um, they're also called hookra, by the way, right here under these oaks. So I'm going to throw a picture on the screen of what it looks like and i've been in talks with terra nova nurseries to purchase a lot of plugs early spring so i'm waiting for them to get back with me uh, and i hope to be able to do something like that under those oaks that i'm really excited about you can actually see under the willow here that all of the opening act pinka dot flocks that i planted from bare root are kind of springing up from the ground uh, this is pretty typical of this perennial and so this whole area here is going to be the opening act uh, pink and dot flocks. I've had flocks in my garden before. Um, it's the tall flocks. Now, a lot of people up here love the really short ground cover flocks. I don't find that I love it so much because it blooms really early in the spring and it's really beautiful. But after that time period, it's just kind of a green mass and um, it doesn't, it takes up space that I could otherwise plant something that's blooming in the actual summer to give me some interest. The new Proven Winners line of phloxes are supposed to be more downy, mildew resistant, which some old varieties of phlox have issues with. So you might want to check them out um, and give them a go. So I'm under the moon gate now, and I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what everything else is looking at, right, looking like right here. So as you'll see here, I also have these peachberry ice hookera, which are looking kind of rough. We still got some uh, tiny blooms there. Some of them are doing really good actually, and they have new leaves coming on them, but it's just that time of year where perennials obviously are not gonna look great in January. Behind them, the serendipity alliums, you can see are sticking out of the ground a little bit. Some's putting on some new growth. That dies back to the ground, but then it'll come up fresh, and alliums are really hardy anyway, so I shouldn't have any issues there. Slightly behind there, you can see the peach sky yarrow that I planted uh, right in front of this Japanese maple that I picked up from MrMaple.com. This is the summer gold. I think I mentioned I left all of my um, tags on all the plants I planted this fall, pretty much, because uh, I just wanted to remember what the shrub was and kind of where the locations were. Typically I'm really good at just rattling off plant names and I, I get really good at that in summer when I'm constantly looking at plants online and designing, but over winter when I'm not looking at that stuff it can be kind of hard to bring up some of those names because a lot of them are very similar. Uh, so we got the big blue liriope uh, hedge down here which seems to be pretty evergreen unlike some of the other varieties. I've seen of liriope. This one still actually looks pretty good. Um, and then we have the tiny hedge of tater tot arborvitae that I planted earlier this year. So in my last video, I talked about the rabbits or squirrels eating 
uh, some of my roses and a lot of people commented that it was probably rabbits most likely not squirrels the only reason I suspect squirrels is because in my earth boxes that I have against the house right here I've actually had um, some damage to my blackberry canes last year and there's no way rabbits could get in there so it's probably most likely rabbits since they've done a little other damage but I don't rule out squirrels because I have saw damage in locations that a rabbit couldn't go at all. Uh, a lot of people provided great methods to reduce that damage. I don't have a lot of rabbit damage during the year, and I'm not interested in uh, pursuing some of those options simply because the truth is I'm kind of a lazy gardener. I know I do a lot, but I'm not interested in planting things that rabbits or other animals are gonna munch on that I'm gonna have issues with protecting so if the plant cannot survive uh, just out by itself I'm not interested in taking the time and putting in the effort to allow that plant to survive there'll be another plant that can go in that location that will do really well now for the rabbit or squirrel damage I'm having most likely rabbit uh, I don't get that very often except in November so a lot of this rose damage was done in November and I just got really late out here putting out the repels all. Uh, I think it's when they're going dormant and it starts getting cold they start looking around for food or something and they nibble on a lot of the smaller shrubs that I have. I've never seen any damage to larger shrubs in my garden uh, so it's just those really tender things that I've had issues with uh, and them chewing on those. So. A lot of people mentioned the roses would probably survive fine. I hope that's the case. The only reason I was concerned was I have had a rose die in the past from that issue. And I'm not really concerned about the roses that I showed you in the video. There's a couple other ones around them that have been eaten off nearly to the ground. It's those that I'm concerned about. Those that still have growth above the ground are probably going to do perfectly fine. It's just the smaller ones that have been eaten really close to the ground that I'm concerned about. But hopefully they'll be fine, and if not, I may do a little rearranging and plant some perennials there in its place. Otherwise, the garden is looking pretty darn good uh, for this time of year. Uh, the perennials I planted here, which is the Feather Falls Carex, you can see along this path, it's a newer variety of Carex, kind of. Um, it's looking really good, and it's still evergreen, but you can actually see the damage here from bunnies munching on it too. So we are in front of the arbor that I'm putting a rose on this spring that I've already ordered. I'm saving that for a separate video and I'll just go over both of those roses in the video. But my evergreen lily of the valley shrub, which you can see the ground is still very much frozen. I can't even get out of the, get out this tag. Um, this one is called Interstella. It's really beautiful. It's evergreen. It's had a little bit of damage on it, but I don't think that may have been how it was trimmed at the uh, nursery when I got it. But I hope to be super impressed by this shrub. It may take it a couple years to get going, but it's pretty flexible in its light conditions, I think. So I think this will be a really good spot. Um, it's going to be kind of brutal and get a lot of heat. One thing I'm not looking forward to, which as most of you know, I put in nearly all of this area back here uh, last year. And so there's going to be a lot of drip that's going to have to be run uh, at least this first year to keep these things looking good. So you can see in here, I ripped out what was here as well, which was some lavender that was just too big for the area and didn't perform great for me right here and so i've got the back in black sedum that's looking really great some more peach sky yarrow which you can see popping out of the ground there and some more tater tot arborvita that i just had left over that i stuck there so it'll be a nice little hedge of evergreen in front of this air conditioning cover we put together here and some nice drought tolerant perennials so i've mentioned on this side of the house um, this isn't my favorite garden space, and so this year I think I'm going to focus on this space and rework the area and make sure that I have a lot of drought tolerant plants over here. You can see I put the back in black sedum. I'll put videos or pictures of these on the screen just so you can see what they look like. Uh, but the back in black sedum will be really drought tolerant and established really well over here. 
So one mistake I would say I made when I did this bed, it was right after I was getting into drip irrigation. This entire bed is run with quarter inch drip irrigation and I'm not going to recommend that, uh, that you do it that way for entire beds. You should use the half inch drip irrigation and just use the quarter to go to certain shrubs. But this is kind of a tangled mess of some drip irrigation lines that I will probably try and clean up. This area of the garden is the front under my tiny magnolia tree. Uh, I really like leaving the astilbe up during winter because it's a really nice winter air interest. You can see my hookahs here will need some cleaning up and I typically leave all the leaves from this magnolia just to fall in this bed and provide a little mulch over winter and some extra winter protection for this area. One variety of a still bee that I have purchased is called Dark Side, I believe, and it's not going to come until 2023. So I ordered it over a year in advance. But it has really interesting genetics in that the leaves are like a really dark purple black, and then it has obviously the regular still bee blooms. And so it'll be a really different texture for the garden that you don't normally see. One thing I also ordered for 2023 are hellebores. Uh, I really love hellebores and I want to introduce more of them to my garden because it really is a sign that spring is coming. They're also called Linton Rose. They're one of the first things to bloom in the garden. But you can pick them up around March for around $10. And Hellebore can be really expensive because they grow really slowly. And so if you have a Trader Joe's locally, start looking around March in your area and you can pick up some beautiful hellebore. So let me show you those blooms right quick. So there's not much to see yet because we don't actually have blooms, but we do have buds and you can see them right here. I need to come through in early spring and trim off some of the old foliage. Uh, so hellebores are pretty evergreen, but they do need their foliage cleaned up just like the hookah in spring and then you'll typically cut all their foliage off and it'll put brand new out. Boxwoods might be something that I add even more to my garden. I know a lot of people don't like boxwoods but I really love that English garden look of the boxwoods and so I may order a ton of more boxwoods to put in my garden this coming year. I've got to decide whether I want to do invest in that many more boxwoods but it's probably going to happen. Because one of the areas I'm thinking about a boxwood hedge is in front of the uh, incredible hydrangeas that I have on the north side. One reason I really, really love boxwood is because they're so versatile. You can put them in full sun and they also take shade really well. They may grow a little smaller. Um, but I think a really nice boxwood hedge, similar to what I've done under the maple, would look really good here in front of these incredible hydrangeas. So you know I have the daylilies that run around front. I'm going to dig them up and stick them in pockets in front of these emerald green arborvita here, which are looking really fluffy and gorgeous. They probably tripled in size since I picked them up a few years ago. So overall, that's just kind of the things I'm dreaming about and waiting to start in spring. So typically, this time of year is when we really get seed starting going. Um, we are only about six to eight weeks away from the middle of March, which is when I will start coming out in the garden. It'll warm up more during the day, even though our nights are still pretty cold. And I can do some work outside preparing and doing my winter cleanup. So I typically save some of my cleanup until the spring, uh, but I do a lot of the stuff in fall that I can mainly because I don't want to have to get out here super early in spring and just work on a lot of stuff. So, Main things that we'll be doing is pruning the hydrangeas, which I have a video on from last year. You can go check that out. I will be taking you along as I do that this year as well, because I wasn't able to get a video out for all different types of hydrangeas last year. But I also need to prune the roses and just come through and clean up any perennial foliage that was left over and clean that up for spring. Another project we'll be tackling is this lawn. You can see how pretty awful it looks. This is the first full year that we've had uh, pretty well grown full size Springer Spaniels. And so my grass is completely bluegrass and you can see there's been a lot of damage uh, up there. And so I'm going to be doing an overseeding in very late winter, um, probably March or April of a turf type 
fescue. So if you're interested in grass, not everyone is. I've mentioned that I really like that feel on my feet when I can walk through my yard um, barefoot. And so if you're interested in grass, follow along as we undertake that renovation. This is not going to be much of a renovation rather than just overseeding what's already here. I really, really love bluegrass, straight bluegrass turf, but that does not stand up very well to um, the dogs and it thins very bad in winter and you can see how rough it's looking right now so we're going to get that tackled this spring and that way next winter hopefully won't be such an issue so thanks for joining me today guys and remember in a world full of hate be a light take care bye